Hello, everyone. We're going to be going over section 8.4, which is on the area of a triangle. So we just have two objectives in this section. Objective one, find the area of an SAS triangle, which is our side angle side triangle, and two, find the area of an SSS triangle. So these are the two triangles that we use our laws of cosines with. So we're going to be finding their areas uh, today. This section is going to be very straightforward. We're given the formulas for finding areas of these types of triangles. So really, we're just plugging in values and calculating our answers from those formulas. So it should be a very quick section today. So in this section, we're going to derive a few different formulas for calculating the area of a triangle, the first being our first definition for the area of a triangle, we have that the area K of a triangle is going to be K is equal to one half base times height, where B is the base and H is the altitude drawn to that base. So we see here height in yellow. This is our height here. So from the base of your triangle to the tallest point. Then our base which is this bottom part here, which we call B. And that's about all it is. <laughs> we get the areas in the one half base times height. So for our first objective, we want to find the area of an SAS triangle. So this equation, this is for any average triangle, but for our first objective now, remember, we're doing the area of an SAS triangle. So if the base B and the height H of a triangle are known, then we can use equation one. So we can use this equation if we already know the base and the height. But most often, we won't know them. So we can develop new equations for very specific triangles like SAS triangles. So now, for the area of an SAS triangle, we can say that K, or the area, is equal to one half A times B, where A is one side length and B is another side length, times sine of C, where C is that angle between the two side lengths. So in this case, even though we have H written out, we're disregarding H. And what we have now is B A and sine of our angle C, which is right there. <laughs> so these would be the only values that we're actually going to care about when solving for the area of an SAS triangle. Then using equation two, we can also rewrite this problem for different angle and side measurements. So we can also get that the area is equal to one half B times C, where in this case, we'll say this side is C uh, times sine of A. So we would have our angle A there. And then K is equal to one half A times C, where sine times sine of B, where our angle B would be there in that case. So we see really that when we're calculating the area of an SAS triangle, what we have are our two connected sides. So those two sides touching and then we're finding multiplying by the sine of the angle that connects those two sides. In words, we can write this out as the area K of a triangle equals one half the product of two of its sides times the sine of their included angle. So that's how we would say in words, you can always remember it this way and it will always be correct instead of trying to memorize the three different equations. But either way, you can memorize them, whichever is easiest for you. So our first example, we wanna find the area K of the triangle for which A is equal to eight, B is equal to six and C is equal to 30 degrees. So what we have here is we have two side lengths and the angle that connects them. So we can go ahead and we can label this. This is gonna be A, B, and this angle is going to be capital C. So what we can do is we can use equation two. We have our side lengths A and B, and we have our value of C, so we can take its sign. So if we write out our answer here, we have two 
side lengths and their included angle. Saying their included angle just means the angle that connects them. So we can use equation two. And equation two states we have K is equal to one half times AB times sine of C. So we're gonna get that K is equal to one half times eight times six times sine of 30 degrees. And all I have to do is solve for K. So eight times six is going to end up being 48 times one half. Uh, this is going to end up giving us uh, 24. Uh, so we end up, this is really just one half times 48 times sine of 30 degrees. We can use our unit circle, or if you already know the value at this point, sine of 30 degrees is going to end up being one half as well. So K is really equal to one fourth times 48, which end up giving us 12. Now we know that the, our answer is 12, but if we want to include units and we're not given any units, what we would say in this case is that we would say 12 square units. And that there would be our answer. So as long as you know two side lengths and their included angle, the equation is gonna be very straightforward. Now for objective two, find the area of SSS triangles, so side, side, side triangles. If the three sides are known, we can use Heron's formula to find the area of the triangle, which Heron's formula tells us that the area K of a triangle with sides A, B, and C is K is equal to the square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C where S is going to be equal to one half times the sum of the three sides. So saying that one more time, S is going to be equal to one half times the sum of the three sides. And then your area is equal to the square root of that value S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C. And once again, we do have a formula. So if we have all these values, going to be very straightforward to plug in. So for example two, we're going to find the area of the triangle whose sides are three, five, and six. Now we can assign values to each one. We can say that three is A, five is B, and six is C. Um, really not that big of a deal which one you're going to assign. And for this example, we're not given uh, a picture or a drawing of a triangle. And that's because for this problem, it really doesn't matter since we don't necessarily need to see which angles and which sides or anything along those lines. All we need to know is the value of the three sides, so we don't necessarily need a picture. If you'd like a picture, you can definitely draw in a picture if you would like. But all right, so example two, we just wanna find the area of the triangle whose sides are three, five, and six, where we're saying that A is presumably three, B is presumably five, and C is presumably six. So the first thing that we wanna do is we want to find S. So we say that S is equal to one half times A plus B plus C. So we have one half times three plus five plus six. Three plus five is gonna be eight. Eight plus six is 14. So we have one half times 14, which gives us seven. So S is equal to seven. And now we can use our formula. So we say S is equal to seven. We can now use Heron's formula. So Heron's formula, remember, is K is equal to 
big square root here, s times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c. So plugging these values in, we know that s is equal to seven. So then we have seven minus a, which we said was three, seven minus b, which we said was five, and seven minus c, which we said was six. So simplifying, we get seven times seven minus three, which is four, times seven minus five, which is two, times seven minus six, which is one. Now we just wanna simplify this as much as possible. So seven times four times two, four times two is gonna be eight times one is still just eight. So we have seven times eight, which is gonna be equal to the square root of 56, which we can simplify this a little bit. We can factor out a four in this case. And when we do, we get four times 14 which we know this just becomes the square root of four times the square root of 14 with the square root of four is two. So our final answer here, we get that K is equal to two times the square root of 14. And remember, we don't have units. So in this case, we're going to write two times the square root of 14 square units. And that there would be our answer. So as far as section 8.4 goes, we're really just using formulas to find the area of specific triangles. Um, and within these questions, we're given most of the values that we, that we need to. So this ended up being a very short section. And I'll see you again in chapter 9 for section 9.1.